This is the Clark Cast Podcast on ClarkCast.com. Now, but I can tell you that, uh, that there was every effort in the world to avoid the real cuts that we need to make in order to preserve the fiscal integrity of our country and, frankly, uh, the real cuts that needed to be made, that need to be made to preserve uh, our entitlement programs, which are important programs to tens of millions of Americans. administration has a job to do as well. And that job is to get this economy back on its feet. That's my job. And my job is to tell you when he's not doing his job. And I'm telling you right here, right now, we have some problems in Washington that need taken care of, that need to be solved yesterday. Dane, right now, what is our current debt? It's at fourteen trillion five hundred and thirty-one billion nine hundred and ninety-five million. Um, yeah, it's just keep growing. It's, it's going, go, it's going too fast for me to actually <laughs> tell you what it is. That's sad. And anything within the thousand range, a hundred thousand range and below, it's like seconds ticking by every second. I've been watching this for the past segment. It's already gone up ten million dollars. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. You know, I, I often joke, but it's the truth that every time I go to break, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars that have already been spent of money that we don't have. Now, you were also showing me, you, what, what were you doing? You were doing a, a compare and contrast between now, here in 2011, and 2010, 2009, and all the way back to 2000. Now, right. start at 2000. What was our debt at 2000, in the year 2000? Well, if you go to the usdebtclock.org, in the top right corner, they have the little button that says the time machine or debt clock time machine. Back in 2000, on this day, our national debt was five trillion. You, you can just round up. So it, just, yeah, five ar- trillion, approximately six, if you want to. Okay, round up. But. So nine trillion less. Yeah, nine trillion less. And I actually hear the blue angels flying over right now. <laughs> I love that. By the way, <laughs> they, they, I, I heard them flying outside my apartment uh, the other day. Oh, uh, it was I, great. I, I saw one of them just cruise by. Oh, it was beautiful thing to see for those of you listening on the uh the world wide web the uh u.s navy blue angels are in town right here and they've been uh, doing an air show it's just great seeing those go by and i was talking yesterday i went to the michigan beer festival my my friend dragged me there i told him i hate crowds i hate crowds and but i'm a big fan of of good microbrewed beer and so he dragged me there and i will admit publicly on the air that i had a good time and don't worry we'll get back to the we'll get back to the debt (laughs) I need to have some sanity every now and then. Uh, but what was really cool, that every 20 minutes, you'd see the Blue Angels fly low overhead together. You know, they were in sync with one another, and it was really awesome. And it almost gave you an instant dosage of, uh, of patriotism. So anyway, so in 2000, it was $6 trillion ish Right. Okay, that's, what, $9 trillion less than what we have now? Do you, what, what are we at? We're at $15 trillion minus yeah. 6, 15 yep. minus 6. Okay. And then what's the next one up? The next one is in 2004. Okay, what was the debt in 2004? 7 trillion 334 billion. 7 trillion 300 from blah 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 blah. So 2 trillion ish more. I'd say probably closer to okay. 1 and a half. Well, okay, let's jump to 2008, please if you can. Because we're really going to put the timeline. We're really going to see who the true culprit is, which we already know it is. It's Bush spending in his later years and Obama spending uh well, in all of his years. In 2008, it's up to 10 trillion. <laughs> Almost even, ten trillion and fifty-seven billion. Oh my gosh! So that's three trillion in the past four years. The four years between two thousand four and two thousand eight. Right. I'm I'm going to chance this. We, this is a very short audio clip before I get hit with the uh, the top of the hour here. But listen to this. This is a debate and fight is not between Democrats and Republicans. It's between some Republicans and their sort of cult fringe, as I refer to them out there. Keep that in mind. Democrats are willing to do whatever is necessary to raise the debt thing, not for future, future borrowing, but to pay the debts that we racked up in the past. In the past. Which mostly was racked up 
by a Republican House, a Republican Senate, and a Republican president in the last eight years. In the last eight years, oh my gosh, by the Republican president. Hey, Dane, fast forward to 2010. Can you please, can you tell me what the debt was in 2010 last year? Uh, no, it only goes in increments of four. Oh, it only goes in increments of four. Well, well the current debt is 14.5, 14. and in 2008 it was what? 2008, there was 10. 10. Okay, so four and a half trillion just in that time span. And the president of the United States, in just his first two years in office, accumulated more debt than the foundation of the country all the way up to the early 90s. So if you want to talk about who's really responsible, yes, George W. Bush had a huge hand in it. But this progressive president, this very far left Congress, is a recipe for disaster as we see. It's time to get our house in order. Back in a few moments. This is the Clark Cast with Matt Clark. In the previous segment, in the last hour there, we were talking about the debt. Actually, the whole hour we were talking about the debt, but we were specifically talking about the numbers. Where have we been over the past eight years, ten years, and who really is to blame? And yes, we are going to cast some blame on some people here. Now, George Bush, I threw under the bus in some regards because him passing TARP, remember the I've abandoned free market principles to save the free market system. You know that idea? Yeah, that accumulated some debt. Uh, Barack Obama, though, has launched us, skyrocketed us into, uh, I say, a debt that is damn near impossible to get out of. So, Dane, I want to recap, though, with you, if I may. What was the debt in 2000? In 2000, it was at $5 trillion. Okay, and then in 2004, what was the debt? It was up to seven trillion. Okay, and then in uh, 2008, what was the debt? We we're up to ten, and currently 2011, where are we at? 14.5. Yep, 14.5. and then some change. Now you were going through this, and there's a feature. And we're, by the way, we're getting this off of usdebtclock.org, which is an amazing resource. It's just it's a huge calculator that is continuously calculating the revenue, the debt, and doing all the calculations for you. And it also breaks it down by how much debt per taxpayer, how much debt per citizen, because there is a difference between the two. Remember, and this is important, remember half the country doesn't pay taxes. Almost half the country doesn't pay taxes. So when we get into, well, we need to talk about the rich paying their fair share discussion, uh, remember that half the country doesn't pay taxes. So Dane, right now in 2011, what is the amount of debt owed by U.S. taxpayer? Per taxpayer, it's $129,974. $129,974. Per citizen now? Per citizen, it's only 46601 Okay, now let's go with the projections, because you were showing me this new feature that I didn't even know of on usdebtclock.org that will show what is the projected debt. So what's the next increment up? Are we going to... It, well, you can only go up uh, to 2015. At the current rate at which it's going, in 2015, the U.S. national debt is going to be up to $22,866,000,000,000. Trillion, <sighs> Four hundred twenty-six million, and then thousands are moving faster. That is unbelievable. Go up by eight trillion dollars, approximately. Yeah, well, you said twenty-two. Yeah, it's at twenty-two. Twenty-two and eight. Yeah, seven and seven and a half. This is unbelievable. In two thousand fifteen, is the does it go up even higher on the projection? No, it's just uh, twenty fifteen. Twenty-two trillion dollars. If you go to my Facebook page, go to facebook dot com forward slash Clarkcast. I posted a, a chart, a graph about. Uh, a week ago, that showcases where the projected debt is really at. It showcases, okay, on this current path that we're on right now, where will we be in the given years? And the chart itself is, it blows you away, because if you have any understanding of, of just, uh, yeah, oh, that's a good idea. Let's let's back up. Debt per citizen in 2015. In 2015, the debt per citizen is going to be $70,000. $70,465 per citizen. And taxpayer? $188,948. dollars <clears throat> Nah, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. Let's just keep that, on spending. That's like, that's like a decent annual salary. That's a great annual salary. Even even the debt per citizen. Yeah, that's, a, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's per citizen. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope everybody out there... And by the way, keep in mind, how many people don't pay income taxes? Half of the population, roughly, does not pay federal income taxes. So if you talk about the amount of debt owed per citizen, if half the people don't even pay income taxes, I mean, where, where does the responsibility lie? Well, actually, one of the great things about this website is it actually goes and shows you exactly what the estimated U.S. population versus the taxpayers are. It says the U.S. population right in 2015 is going to be... 324 billion people 
but the taxpayers is only 121 billion. So it's less than half of the people are actually paying federal taxes. That is so great. I, I cannot look forward. To, well, here's why: because everybody goes on the government money. Remember, we've become a nation of takers and not a nation of makers. And on this current path right now, uh, that's where we're going to be at. More more people are going to be living off the government than giving into the system. And that's not some sort of right-wing conspiracy. You see that. There's the pattern. There are the numbers. We just gave you the numbers right there. And I directed you to go to my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash ClarkCast. You'll see a visual of this. You'll see a graph. And you'll see it start out slow, you know, in the, uh, the early 20th century. You'll see it slowly, very slowly, very, very slowly tick up. And then as you move toward the 1990s and then in the 2000s, the early 2000s, it starts to exponentially grow. And as you look to the 2010s, 2011s, and beyond, that growth is almost vertical, straight up. It's like a rocket ship going straight up. And that is a very good analogy to use. It's like a rocket ship. It's just going straight up. But again... Half the people don't pay income taxes. So when the when the when the uh, the left says, "Well, you know, this is all about uh, the rich need to pay their fair share." Well, we're just going to increase the taxes on the rich. Well, who's making the money? Who's doing all the spending? In the previous segment, I played audio and I forgot to cite it because I was coming up right up at the top of the hour and I wanted to squeeze it in because it's very symbolic. Senator Tom Harkin of uh, Illinois, I do believe, I want to replay that. Here it is. So the debate. And fight is not between Democrats and Republicans. It's between some Republicans and their sort of cult fringe, as I refer to them out there. Keep that in mind. Democrats are willing to do whatever is necessary to raise the debt thing, not for future, future borrowing, but to pay the debts that we racked up in the past, which mostly was racked up by a Republican House, a Republican Senate, and a Republican president in the last eight years. The last eight years. Republican House, Republican Senate, uh, Republican uh, president. Uh, yeah, because George Bush is the one that really is responsible for all of this. Again, he's responsible for a good part of it. But look at Obama. Look at the stimulus. Look at Obamacare. Look at all the big regulations and the big plans that are coming down the line. And look here. Here's a good case in point. Look at that budget that he initially proposed that would actually increase the debt. Uh, I do believe it was twice as much. So, yeah, let's let's talk about spending. Let's talk about reducing the debt. Let's talk about who's who is actually trying to put the fiscal house in order. Who is the one who is making the making the attempt to secure our future, to protect me, the younger guy, me, the millennial generation. Dane's a part of the millennial generation. What about my children? What about my children's children? Because that is generational theft. Some people also call it and I would agree. Uh, generational slavery. You are putting future generations in a slavery position by holding the frivolous spending now, holding them accountable for it. And as we just cited, in 2015, just for being born in this country as a U.S. citizen, you owe, in 2015, under this current path, $70,000 plus dollars into the debt, just for being born. Heaven forbid you actually pay taxes, then you owe one hundred and eighty-eight plus thousand dollars in two thousand fifteen under this current projected path. So yeah, let's let's actually talk about who's responsible. That's that's great. Subscribe for the free iTunes podcast at Clarkcast.com slash iTunes.